Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sioka Nissan of Quakertown here in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Check out this brand new 2023 Nissan Aria Engage. Now the Engage is the lower level trim of the Aria. We've already seen the Evolve Plus Aria and I'll put that review at the end of this one, but we're going to check out the base model today. This vehicle only has one option, which is the two-tone paint. Everything else in this Engage is going to be standard equipment. So we're going to check this out. See what it brings to the table in this EV market. So let's dig in. All right, the front end of the Aria, we have the silver and black. Always a good color combination, classic color combination. LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals, functional side air curtains, some functionality down below to keep those lithium ion battery packs cool when this vehicle is in motion but overall it's a pretty good looking front end i just wish nissan would do maybe a little bit more on this fake grill because obviously we don't need a real one up here because we don't have an engine but i would like to see a little bit more design or something a little bit more engaging <laughs> a little play on words up here as far as the front grill area let me know what you think all right, the wheel and tire package on the Aria Engage, we have a 19 inch wheel. We have the gloss black with the gray or gunmetal gray accents in it. Obviously, all of these designs are also functional to make sure that air is channeled down the side of the car to decrease the coolant drift coefficient of drag and to increase range. So that's why you see this type of design, the Nissan badge right on the center cap. These 19-inch wheels are wrapped in Bridgestone Alenza all Sport all-season tires, 235 on the width of 55 series sidewall, 19s, all four corners, front wheel drive. All right, here is the full side profile of the Aria Engage. Now we have the gray, but all the black around the wheel wells and along the bottom of the door sills is all gloss black. Looks great new, could get pretty beat up when this thing gets a few miles on it. We have the charge port on the front right side of the vehicle. We'll go over those charging numbers and range a little bit later in the video. We also have that lovely, which I think is really good, that kind of brushed aluminum trim that goes above the windows right underneath the roof and down into the tailgate area. And I'm glad they didn't put any on the bottom because I think that would have been too much. In the black roof, the two-tone look, uh, I think makes it look a, little, a lot more attractive and a bit sporty, even though this is not a sporty EV. All right, as we move in closer, this is all the gloss black around the wheel wells that I was talking about. That's a pretty thick amount, too. Here's our charge port. Side view mirrors are gloss black, color matched on the front and the rear door handle. Then we have a roof spoiler in black coming off the top. Black roof with the shark fin antenna, and the Engage does not have a sunroof. At least this one doesn't. All right, as we come to the rear end of the RE Engage, again, we have that roof spoiler coming off the top. Rear wiper on the bottom of the glass. Nissan spelled out right in the middle. We have LED taillights and LED turn signals, which is nice. Aria on the left, Engage on the right, and then all gloss black on the rear bumper area. So that is, again, that gloss black could get, take a beating once this car gets some miles on it, but it looks pretty good here in the back of this Aria. All right, under the hood of the Aria, well, we don't have an engine, obviously, it's an EV. So we have battery pack and electric motor, since this is front wheel drive, single motor. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at a 66 kilowatt hour, 350 volt lithium ion battery pack, making 214 horsepower, 221 pound feet of torque, it's mated to a one-speed automatic transmission, MPGEs, 109 in the city, 94 on the highway, 101 combined. All right, right front fender at the charge port. We have two ways to charge the Aria Engage. We have the level two charging up top, DC fast charging down below. Now, on a full charge, the Aria gets about 216 miles of total range. Now, the Evolve Plus was about 290, 295. So, this one is much less. But of course, the price is about eight to $10,000 less than the Evolve. So, there you have it. 
Now, charging times on a level two charger at home to a full charger looking at about 10 hours. DC fast charger for a full charge, about an hour and eight minutes. And if you want to go 10% to 80%, which is going to add about 151 miles in 35 minutes. So that's not half bad. Let me know what you guys think about the range and the charge times in the comments. All right, before we get into the interior of the Aria Engage, you're going to want to know, Mike, how much do I have to shell out for this Engage? Maybe opposed to a Evolve Plus if I'm interested in these Arias because they, they look pretty cool. Well, like I said in the intro, this Engage only has one option, and that is the two-tone paint. So, MSRP, base for the Aria Engage front-wheel drive. Is forty three thousand one ninety. The additional charge for the two tone silver and black paint is three hundred and fifty dollars. Then you got to add in destination and delivery of one thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars from Nissan's Elizabeth assembly plant. You have a total MSRP of forty four thousand eight seventy five from the factory. Now, the dealer has added a couple of accessories. They've added the wheel ux for $95 and all-weather floor mats for $175. So the, the to dealer's asking price for this vehicle on the lot today, $45,145. let us get on with the interior review. All right, starting with the foot box, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. The floor mats are in the cargo area right now. Seat. We have power seats with lumbar for the driver manual assist for the front passenger. Then we have these nice black or charcoal actually colored uh, seats. Now this is not leather. This feels like leather, looks like leather. The window sticker doesn't tell me exactly what fabric it is or what material it is, but I'm gonna guess it's that ActiveX or Syntex, something like that. But it looks good, headrests are nice and soft. We have a nice, uh, suede type material on the insert, which is nice, feels good to the touch overall, and it's a nice looking interior here in this Engage. Now, to the driver door panel, what I do like here is I like two memory seat settings and using this button right in the middle, power fold mirrors. That's nice on a base model, and that's standard on a base model, Aria, so that's nice. Door panels, I'm liking the door panels. They look good. You've got soft touch and more of that uh, Syntex or ActiveX type material with the black stitching. We have flat black around the door handle, which is chrome. And then we have a nice insert design here, uh, a great type design. I'll zoom in on that to give you an idea of what it looks like. That looks really, really cool. And then we have a nice soft, soft armrest in that Syntex or ActiveX material. Gloss black on the switch gear, though, I'm not a fan of. And then we have copper stitching along the, uh, the uh, armrest. That might have been nice to do that up on the upper part of the door, too. Let me know what you think. We have a more of this uh, ActiveX Syntex type faux leather, I'm just going to start calling it, with the black stitching, with the copper and that, and they also, what they do is they integrate the heat and air vents into the design using this copper, which is nice. Then we have this open pour wood type design in here, which is nice too. And then, and then we have a nice large glove box using this button right here. Nicely done. All right, infotainment system. We got Nissan's 12.3 inch infotainment system which I really like. It is wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Here's your home where you can go through and look at all of the options that you have to see up here. And I think that's really nice. You can also uh, set it up and design it with all the information you may want to see on here. So that's also a really nice, nice touch here on this Aria. And it swipes really easy. We can go to our navigation and it brings it up on the whole screen and then we can just zoom on in and it zooms in it's pretty pretty smooth on the pinch to zoom but we'll zoom it on in there we go this is where we are now so it is it, it is pretty good we can go back to home right there 
do we want to save a home location? No, I'm not going to save a home location. We can look up where our closest charging stations are. So that's nice. You can look up where your nearest coffee shops are. So that's kind of cool. We can look up where our closest parking availability is. So they have a lot of nice little features in here in this area. And then we can go to our destination and get all these other types of stuff up here. Now, if we go to our backup camera, nice and clear, takes up the whole screen with trajectory. They should be putting this camera in their other Nissan cars because it's much better than the other ones. And then on the side here, you have more menu items here where you can go to your climate controls. You got dual climate control action, which is nice. You do have heated seats, which you can stick on or turn on auto or turn off. So that's nice. We have a heated steering wheel up here, which you can turn on or off. So I'm liking how this looks. Now, we only have heated seats in here, no ventilated seats. And that's con considering this is a base Aria. I don't have a problem with that. But I do like the addition of the heated steering wheel. So then they got you covered. But just about everything you want to do here is within the, uh, within the uh, infotainment screen. But it does, does respond nice. And I love the fact we got the wireless CarPlay Android Auto. And if you just want to turn on the heated steering wheel, you got the icons down here where you can just hit it and it's going to go right into a smaller window where you can pop it on or pop it off. So, or leave it on auto. If you have it on auto, that means that when you start the vehicle up, let's say it's in the winter time and it's cold out and you start the vehicle up, your heated seats, if the heat comes on, which it should, if you have, let's say set on 70, the heated seats and the heated steering will all automatically come on because they're tied into the climate control system. So I do like that. Moving down further, we have a physical knob or dial for your volume, four-way hazards. Here is the seek for your music. Down further, here is your power button to turn the car on. And then we have some haptic feedback. And I really like the way they did this because they have this integrated into this open pour wood design rather than just having a flat black panel behind it. So I like how they did that. Really gives it some style and you can adjust your temperature, your defroster, your fan speed, put your uh, climate control on auto, direct how you want the air to go. So it is really nice how they designed that into the wood. I think that's pretty cool. And then we have a secondary glove box underneath here. All you have to do is push the button there and you get another uh, glove box or storage area that drops down. So that's a nice touch. Now, as we come to our floating center console, here is the gear shift that's going to take you through the one-speed automatic transmission. So that's cool. More of this wood with more haptic feedback buttons on here where you got your drive modes. You got your E-step. Back here, you can move this floating center console forward or back, depending on where you want it for your arm. So that's nice. Underneath, you have more storage down here with a USB-C, a USB-A, and a 12 volt. So they got you covered there. And if you had a wireless charger in here, it should be down here, but this Engage doesn't have one. As we come back up, two cup holders. And then I really like the new Nissan key fob for the Aria Nissan badge on the front. We have lock, unlock, panic button. Nice weight, a bit heavier than the standard key fob. And then if you want to close this up, you can move this forward too, and you have more of that open pour wood look with the copper on the handle, which really looks nice. Here's our armrest, nice and soft, more of that copper trim. And then you can open that up, and I, I take that back. Here's where your uh, wireless charger would go if it had one. So there you have it. That's all set. And then you have an area here for some extra storage. The Aria steering wheel, look, I just love the way the steering wheel looks. You have these beautiful feeling steering wheel with the 10 and 2 notches, copper stitching. We have aluminum trim, the new Nissan badge. Not a fan of the gloss black here, but we do have some silver buttons on it as well. Flat bottom wheel to help you get in and out of the car, which is a nice touch. 
Really like that. Now, on the switch gear, what do we have here? Well, what we have here is our volume and controls for our media and for our digital dash. And then on the right side, we have our uh, safety suite controls, adaptive cruise control, telephone voice commands, and that sort of thing. But a really nice looking wheel here on this Aria. I really like it. On the left stock, on the left stock, you have your headlight controls and adaptive high beam controls. And then on the right side, you have your front and rear windshield wipers. Down below here, you can brighten or dim the uh, dash. Then we have our steering assist on off. This is when you're in cruise control. It's kind of almost like a semi-autonomous semi thing. Here you can adjust your parking sensors and then your auto vehicle hold. And then we can turn off the power uh, to the car. And then we have a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then here is our digital dash, which looks really, really nice. Drive mode action. We have sport, standard, and eco. So they got you covered for your modes, which I like. You got the e-step button, which goes on right over there underneath the ready button. So they got that one set up like that. And then if you want to use you can change the view of how you want to look at the vehicle. So let's say we want to change the meter view. We can go ahead and hit that. And then we get a different view. And then we can go back. And we can hit change meter view. And we go back to the way it was here. So I kind of like this one. I don't know about you guys, but that looks pretty cool. I like the way that looks. And we can also go through our music presets on here, which is what that does. We can go back to our home and then we can go through other information here in the middle screen. So again, a nice use of technology here in this Aria, which I really do like. Overhead console in the Aria. Here's your SOS button in case you have an emergency on the road. If you want your Dome lighting to come on and off and open and close the door. This button in the middle has to be on with the orange light lit. And then when you open the door, the lighting will come on. When you close the door, the lighting will dim out. Then you have an area here for your sunglasses. So they got you covered there. No sunroof. And then we have our sun visor with vanity and a light. And does it slide? Yes, it does to block out the side sun. All right, getting in the back of the Ariane gauge, we open up the door. See the set for my driving position, so we'll hop on in. Low bridge on the head, getting in. If you're tall like me, five foot eleven, you're going to smack your head if you don't duck. So be aware of that. But the seat set for my driving position, like I said, and look at all the knee room I have in the back of this area. Plenty of shoulder width room, plenty of head room. I have this fabric all the way down with the seat pocket behind both front seats, which is nice. In the back here. We have heat and air vents. We have three-stage heated seats for the both rear passengers with a USB-C and a USB-A. I'm liking that quite a bit on a base Aria Engage. The heated out, rear heated seats in the back are standard. That's a nice touch. As we come over to the door panels, same nice material on the door panels that we saw in the front. So we here's the front door panel looking good. And here's the back door panel looking the same with the same copper stitching on the armrest. Looks good. Rear seats, same material with the insert, the suede type material insert. Looks good. Nice and soft, very comfortable. And then our center armrest, super soft with two cup holders for the back seat folks. So they got you covered here in the back of this Aria Engage, and boy, is it comfortable back here. Tailgate action on the Aria. This is not an electric tailgate. It's a manual one, so you got to come to back, and right underneath the S in Nissan, there's a button. Hit it, and you got to lift up. Not that heavy, but it is manual, and a really nice area for storage with the back rows of seats up. We have two different storage areas right in here. 
We have this one where you can lift up and get some storage. You can lift this panel up, get some more storage. If you want to go deeper, you can lift this up, and then you get into your fix-a-flat, which means no spare tire in this area, which is too bad. We have storage areas on either side, so they give you a little extra. This floor is adjustable as well. We do have lighting on either side of the back, but we don't have a 12 volt for power. Would have been nice to see that. Then we have these horrible tonneau covers I don't like because it gets in the way of me showing you how to get the rear seats down. But we'll just disconnect it for now. Now, to get the rear seat down, you have to go up here and hit this and then push forward and down they go. Push forward, down they go. Now we'll put this cover back up. This snaps back into place. Easy peasy, one, two, three. Not a hard thing to do. And now with the seats down, you get a lot more space, even though the height is restricted. All right, the window sticker for this 2023 Aria Engage front wheel drive. We'll zoom on in, give you the skinny. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we are driving down the road in this 2023 Nissan Aria N-Gage. And we got great visibility out the windshield, side glass, side view mirrors, yeah, rear window is looking good. Again, I'm having all sorts of problems with the voice activation on this Nissan system. It's way too sensitive and it keeps turning on every time I say something that it may think it recognizes. So Nissan, you gotta calm this thing down. It drives people crazy when they're just trying to have a conversation in the car, or in my case, talk to you guys and through the camera. So. We have all of the safety suite of technology in this Aria with the blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, all that jazz is in here. Plus I got a head up display, Can't which again is really a nice touch in a base trim vehicle as part of standard equipment is the head up display. Now it really only gives me a little bit of information, how fast I'm going and what the speed limit on the road is. And that's about it. But overall it is, it's just nice to have one uh, in a vehicle at base, and it drives really, really well. Now, an EV, the battery pack is heavy. I mean, really heavy. So these things have a real low center of gravity, so they drive really smooth, uh, and they handle pretty darn well because you've lowered the car's center of gravity and made the handling better by doing so. So I do like how that is. And uh, I think that's a good deal uh, as far as just making it a more pleasurable car to drive. Suspension's well damped. Tires are very quiet. It is very quiet inside this Aria. And I'm quite impressed by how quiet it really is. Obviously, you don't have to worry about engine noise. Uh, but it is just really, really quiet. And I have the radio off. Everything is relaxed. Have it in eco mode. And it's just a really uh, pleasurable vehicle to drive. Now, I'm testing out E-Step right now, which I think is very interesting. So instead of having paddles on the vehicle where you can adjust the level of regen braking that you want to either drive it like a normal car or drive it once uh, one pedal driving, which means you're going to uh, just 
let your foot up off the accelerator and the car will stop on its own and then you push your push your foot on the accelerator and the car will take off that's what I mean by one pedal and that's what that e-step button is doing for me so instead of having to fart around with the level of regen braking on the paddles I can just hit e-step on or e-step off e-step on I'm one pedal driving e-step off I'm driving like a normal vehicle so I think that's a nice little uh, perk here in this Aria uh, that Nissan put in here. I like that better than farting around with the paddles and looking at the dash to see where I am as far as my level of regen braking. That's a nice touch. Let me know what you guys think about that. But now we're going down the road. We're going to come up to these turns, see how it handles. And again, with that low center of gravity, the car handles beautifully. Really well done. We're going to come up here and make a sharp right. Now we're going to check out our emergency braking in 3, 2, 1. All right, everything went flying off the seat, but it stopped on a dime, and it was nice and linear, and now off we go. Again, we're talking front motor, so it's not going to be not going to be quick, right? You got 200 and what did I say, 14 or 16 horsepower, 221 on the torque, but it handles really well around those sharp curves. Now they do make the Aria Engage and Aria Evolve in a dual motor all-wheel drive configuration, where you're going to get up around 400 horsepower and get a much more sporty drive. So that all depends on whether you want to just use this as an economical EV or whether you want to ramp it up and get the all-wheel drive for the winter bonus as well as more performance bonus with the additional horsepower. But that is available in both the Engage and the Evolve trim in the Aria. Turning radius test. Here we go. Nobody's coming. Nice, really sharp. Come down here. Let's take off, see what happens. You get that initial pushback in the seat. And then right here, it flattens out a little bit in the power because we just have the front motors. But now we're up to speed easily. I mean, EVs, you get instant torque right from the get-go. And so it really gets the car up to speed easily. And I'm really liking how this drives and I'm really liking how Nissan has made this handle. It really is a, a fun little EV to drive. The whole question is, for me in this particular Engage is, 216 miles doesn't seem like a lot of range. Now, the Evolve, we get almost 300, 290, 295, almost 300. That's more competitive, but then you're spending 52, 53 on an Evolve. And then all of a sudden, at that price point, it makes that range seem a little low. So I think Nissan needs to work on the range for both their vehicles, for both the Aria and the uh, both the Evolve Aria and the Engage Aria to get the range up better, especially on the front wheel drive models. If you're going only front wheel drive, you're probably looking at something that's going to be an economical car you want to get around town or wherever you need to go on your commute and not have to use any gas. And you want to have enough range for that. So with the front wheel drive models, they really need to be over 300 uh, miles in range, I believe. With the all-wheel drive models, they need to be around 270, 250 to 275 in total range to be right where everybody else is in competitive. Because now other car makers are trying to push to 400 miles of range rather than 3 to 350. Uh, so it's hard to say. If you look at the competition, Hyundai Ioniq 6 in their 19-inch wheel, front wheel, front motor only, uh, Ionic 6 is getting like 360 to 361 
which is over a hundred and something more miles of range than this Aria gets. So I think Nissan's got to work on that. But they have down the interior. I think they got down pretty darn well. The driving characteristics, the handling, I think they have down really, really well. And the other thing I want to talk about real quick is the incentives that Nissan has on this vehicle. Now, I normally don't talk about incentives. I normally only tell you what the MSRP is. But I do want to make a, a mention on incentives because the Aria is not eligible for federal tax credits because the car was built in Japan. It was not assembled here in the United States. The fin finishing touches were put on the vehicle in the United States, but the vehicle is built in Japan, so it's not eligible for federal tax credits. But Nissan it does have a strong incentive package on these Arias. And let me ask you a question about this one. You've seen what this looks like. You know that the MSRP is around a four, 45 grand for this Aria. If I told you, this is just hypothetical. If I told you, you could get this car that we that I showed you today with only 216 miles of range, but the exact car that I showed you today, if I told you, you didn't have to pay 45, you could get this car for 39, would you buy it? Let me know. Now, I don't know that for sure. It's just a hypothetical question I'm asking. But with the strong incentive programs from Nissan, I bet you, I bet you dollars to donuts, you could push a dealer hard enough if you really wanted to buy one. And I bet you could buy one of these if you wanted to purchase it under 40 Gs. Let me know what you think. Or if you own an Aria, let me know if you were able to achieve that. Uh, with your local Nissan dealer, but there are strong incentives. I can't go into specific incentives uh, state by state because every state has different EV uh, incentives of their own and every market's different that Nissan operates in within the United States. But I'm just throwing that hypo hypothetical question out there on the video. If you could buy this for under 40 Gs, let's say closer to 39, would you do it? Let me know in the comments. But I want to thank Sioka Nissan of Quakertown here in Quakertown, Pennsylvania for allowing the channel access to this 2023 Nissan Aria Engage EV for review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.